I just want to discuss this because I feel like I never talk about this in my vlogs. That's just where we're at, so it's just honest. It's being more vulnerable than what we typically are probably on the channel. I had a feeling you'd come back and save me. I'm driving, you're smiling, just really doing nothing, that's the thing. And this is how you know. It was a very successful workout. My hair and if you ever see me in the winter without a coat on, that means it was a very sweaty workout because I refuse to put my jacket over my sweat. But on strength days, I can do that because I don't really sweat that much. But anyway, it is actually 1245. This is very unusual for me. I am a morning workout kind of girl and I did some reflecting on this. I mean, first of all, it allows me to just be free for the rest of my day, but also, my favorite part about working out, really, like, literally the only part that is enjoyable, that's an exaggeration, but it's the end. It is the last minute of my workout slash when I finish. That feeling is why I work out. I don't work out to feel like my heart is going to beat out of my chest, to sweat so much it gets in my eyes. Like, that all happens and that's part of the journey, but I work out for the feeling I get after. And by working out in the morning, I have that feeling for the rest of the day. Like it stays with me. And so, yeah, that's kind of one of the reasons I prefer a morning workout. But every once in a while, I like to just like switch it up and try to switch up my routine just because things can get pretty monotonous. And obviously I have the privilege to be able to kind of create my own schedule right now and create my routine. So it felt nice to get some work done this morning. And really, I knocked out most of my work for the rest of the day, which just feels great. It's Friday, it's gonna be a good weekend. I'm excited. Tonight, Zach and I are actually going out to dinner with his uncles, which will be really nice. And his one uncle, his uncle Tim, is going to be the officiant at our wedding. So we kind of wanted to take them out to dinner as a little thank you, because obviously that is a very important role in our wedding. And we actually still need to decide whether or not we are going to be saying personal vows, which at some of the weddings I've gone to, the couple just has like the standard vows. They don't say anything. It's super simple, super quick. And honestly, the full ceremony lasts like less than 20 minutes. But then I've also gone to weddings where the couple decides to write vows to each other. And here's the thing, Zach and I are kind of split on this. Neither of us feels very strongly about it, but he wants to say the vows. He thinks it's very nice when the couple does. And I agree, we've gone to so many weddings where they do decide to write vows to each other and it's just so nice to watch. Like I, I love it so much, but I can't imagine saying like emotional things in front of a group of people. Like that's just not who I am. It's not the type of family I come from. So that kind of frightens me a lot. And here's the thing. I think even if we don't say public vows, we can do it just to each other. Like no one else needs to hear what we say. So either way, I want us to say vows to each other. It's just, do I want to add in the extra pressure of having to speak in front of others? And I just know it's going to make me feel so nervous on my wedding day, like just knowing like I have to say these things. I sound like crazy considering I'm the one who, who was on camera, a TV news reporter, and I do this for a living with YouTube. But it's just like when it's like a very personal thing. I don't know. It's It, it frightens me. Okay, I was talking to them about how we're meeting with Tim and Ted today and we need to figure out whether or not we are doing public vows. Can you move this up? Just scrouch a little more, why <laughs> don't you? Does that satisfy your requirements? <laughs> what do you wanna do? Well, we, I think we both already have said what we're leaning toward and I told them I was leaning toward not doing public vows and you were leaning toward doing public vows. Yeah, I mean, I think it's easier to not do them. I urge just like with the pressure of public speaking, which I think you would be a better public speaker than I would be. Not with this kind of thing, no. But just in general, probably. If that's like, if your baseline's already higher, then it's higher. I think I prefer when I'm at a wedding <laughs> and they do their own vows because I just think it's more personable and has like a nicer touch to it. So that's why I'm leaning that direction. Oh gosh, I just know myself and like, I just know I'm gonna be like vomiting. Like I'm, I don't like, like I just don't like the pressure and like do people really need to know my feelings about you? <laughs> like I just. Yeah, unless they're not good. No, like I just don't need like my dad like sitting there like cringing as <laughs> my dad would. He's gonna be like, what are these freaks saying they love each other? You guys know my dad. No, I mean, we can go either way. In the grand scheme of things, it won't affect the wedding. 
that much. No, and honestly, what I was saying was we could do private vows. Oh, yeah, we could. Well, here's the thing. If we do public vows, I'm gonna be like making it funny. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm gonna be writing for an audience, let's face it. Yeah, and maybe, you're so funny. Yeah, I'm funny. I'm gonna throw in some jokes. <laughs> But like, it's just that that's just how it's gonna have to be. Like, it's just, I can't be all like crazy lovey-dovey. Yeah, maybe just be normal and don't stretch your joke limits, which have a range. I'm funny. In scenarios, in a wedding scenario in which we're supposed to be nice and lovey. I'm not sure how you'll do. Are you like so excited to see me walk down the aisle and stuff? <laughs> Keeps me up at night. I'm so excited. What? Just thinking about <laughs> it? Yeah. Will you cry? Maybe. Will you cry? No. But Girl doesn't I have, cry. Cry? I have makeup on and stuff. So I have to do the crying. You gotta do, you gotta do the crying. <laughs> like shed so many tears. Just think about, honestly, here's what you have to do. When I'm walking down the aisle, think about me leaving you. Death. Yeah, that sounds like, like all... a great thing that you want to be thinking <laughs> about on your way. Well, we day. gotta evoke the tears somehow. Dinner last night was so freaking good. If you guys are in, well actually it's a chain, right? Firebirds? Yeah, I believe it's nationwide. Oh my gosh, the smell, I guess they had something burning like to create ambiance. So freaking good, oh my gosh. And it was obviously so nice just catching up with Zach's uncles. Meanwhile, today we are, for the first time ever, going to Crate and Barrel, which I am so hyped about. I've heard so many people talk about it, but we were talking about our wedding registry and what to do about that. I don't know. So Zach's parents suggested Crate and Barrel would be great for getting plates and things like that. But it's so hard with wedding registries nowadays because with the timing of moving, like, you know, how are we gonna create a whole registry but not have a house? And it's just, the timing is weird. I feel like back in the day, and especially this at least happened with my parents, they got married and then they moved into their first house together. So it totally made sense, but we are not in that position. So I want to go there. I want to get an idea of things. We might end up just not doing a wedding registry though. Like what are your thoughts? My honest thoughts would be, I've never given anybody an actual gift at a wedding myself. I just give money. Personally, I know it's, if people put things on their registry, that's for a reason because they want them. I get that. I still fully believe I would prefer money and that's why I do it because then you can pick exactly what you want. You can go out Sure, it might be simpler if you get all, your whole house set in one event, which is certainly nice. And if you then move in together, like Clancy was saying, the more traditional route of marriage probably for the last hundred plus years or more, but that's just, it's changed. People live together, they move in together. I mean, I would have never been engaged or getting married to anybody, like, and Clancy's included in that, unless you live with them. I fully believe. Wait, I have a question. What if Zach? What if? Uh, you obviously, I'm the love of your life. Like we've all established. No. That. So if you're asking if we would have gotten married without living, <laughs> the answer is no. I no? wouldn't do it. No. But Zach, I'm the love of your life. You no. would cut me off just yes, like that. Because I I've seen it firsthand where people move in together and it's completely different. It's not anything to do with you or anybody else, and everybody can. If you don't want to live together, perfectly fine. You guys, again, your relationship is completely up to you. And my relationships are completely up to me. And it, there's no way I would get engaged or married to someone unless I've lived with them. It is weird though, because I'm on the same page with you, Zach. But we did have the experience where we moved in together. Nothing was surprising. Nothing changed. Like, it... I understand that that's like rare, but like there were just literally no surprises when we moved in together, I feel like. No, but we've already been through like <laughs> trials and tribulations, ups like, and that to me is a part of a relationship where I think if people don't do it and then that all that stuff hits you and then, I mean, look at the divorce rate, it's crazy. And that's not all because of people not living together and I'm not saying that, but I certainly think a percentage of that is, is because people believe that they are with the one and whatever else and i'm not saying they're wrong i'm just saying how i view it much more black and white like okay let's let's try it let's see it let's do it we've overcome some stuff so i love that That's a, that helps me believe we're the real deal helps me buy a, an expensive ring it helps me want to <laughs> get married it helps me want to move in and buy a house one day so no that that is true like i will say it, it gives me 100% like this is it. Whereas I feel like, let's say like we got engaged after nine months. Did I want to marry you after nine months? Yeah. 
but I think there could have been questions like, oh, like, you know what I mean? Before we had our first real argument, I would have been like, well, am I just, are we just making up because we're already in it? I am very happy that we have fought and done, that, but I'm happy that all that stuff's happened and we've been able to try to communicate through it, understand each other. Yeah, sure. Could we have probably got, did it, was I a little bit slow to the engagement? Yes, I probably could have bought the ring <laughs> sooner than uh, I did, but it's all ancient history, no, no, neither here nor there. And I, I'm, the ring is back on. Zach asked me the other day, like, why haven't you been wearing your ring? Like, is there a reason for this? And the reason I said it, it's Well, just... I wasn't, I didn't actually say it like that. You made it actually sound oh, like yeah. I was concerned about our uh, engagement. No, it just, it's just what's working out. It is a little more complicated when I'm actually lifting weights. Like, normally I'm a runner, so it doesn't matter. But I have been doing burn boot camp a lot lately, so I just haven't been wearing it. But I love my ring, obviously. So, nothing to worry about. Just don't lose it. But anyway, I'm excited to see Crate and Barrel. And by the way, like, we're not just going to Crate and Barrel. The only reason we're going is because we have a baby shower in Cincinnati. So we were like, all right, if we're already here, let's go check out Crate and Barrel. Because there's no Crate and Barrel in Dayton, so... Let us see. I'm scared for the prices. I think it's it's a little bit pricey. Whatever decoration this is, I will never be a fan of. I've seen it in a lot of YouTubers' homes. It just, it's just not it for me. You like in your element or something? In our living room. This stuff is really freaking nice. It's like exactly my type, my style. So I have actually been the worst vlogger ever, but kind of intentionally, like, I don't want to vlog people without their permission. We went to that baby shower yesterday and obviously I'm not going to start like shoving a camera in people's faces. Ooh, this was mine. There's lipstick on it. <laughs> so I, I always try to like respect people's privacy and whatnot, but it was so nice. And we actually have two of our friends in the same friend group, like it's Zach's college friends who are both pregnant and they're like a couple of months apart. So it is so nice. It's life goals. Like my goal in life is to be pregnant at the same time as one of my friends. I feel like it's hard for that to match up and it's weird being friends with Zach because, or being <laughs> friends with you, being in a relationship with Zach who's three and a half years older than me because there definitely is a huge gap in like timelines of our lives. Like for example, a few years ago when I met him, all of his friends were getting married. That was like a foreign concept to me. My friends, you know, most of them were single or maybe just starting to get into serious relationships. And then now Zach's friend group, they're all starting to have babies and it's just like, one step above like what my friends are at. It's really cool to see that and like to see everyone like one step ahead. But meanwhile, we came to Core Life Eatery, which we went out of our way to come here because the food is just so good. Although low key, they skimp. Like for example, these water cups, I don't know if you guys can tell, it is, it's literally shot glasses. Like we, we need larger cups than that. And then also they definitely skimp on the protein. Did you get double protein or no? Wow, he's trying to save for a house. Good job, Zach. I, on the other hand, splurged and I got sweet potato which is a premium option but I actually did a story here a couple of years ago like when I was a reporter and I heard them behind the scenes like talking about like don't put too much chicken in the bowls like it costs a lot of money obviously so they really do they really do scam but oh my gosh stop I'm so happy about the sweet potatoes like did that not just like add so much value to that salad like it's a different salad now looks like someone's not worried about <laughs> saving money. Shout out Mr. Double Protein. You always get double. Okay, I did well, Not today because you knew I was vlogging and you wanted to impress the vlog. The exceptional I mean, impress. Also, Zach, the cup is so small like you're... Oh. <laughs> Good thing I got water. It's literally, it's like they like try to punish you for getting water by putting no water in the cup. Just want to give a little update that Zach just went up and got a side of sweet potatoes. How much was it, Zach? Well, yeah, no, and now I'm mad. Why? 450. 450. <laughs> What is this place? Well, how do they taste? It tastes like a million bucks. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. We did 
Gotta say, playing cards with Zach, a nice, friendly card game always takes a toll on our relationship. We just, we can't handle it with his cheating ways. Never cheated. Do you wanna, always win, do you so. wanna tell them, that's not true, but do you wanna tell them the words you were trying to play? That you did play, actually. Well, show them who won then, if you're saying I didn't know. Okay, don't guys, win. he tried to play, what did you, no, you did play, what were they? Like, he just makes up words and then it's like, look it up. And then of course it's gonna come up as a word, cause like everything's a word, but you should. That is the definition of how you, no, you play. No, I. Dinner is in the oven. I just love a nice, cozy Sunday evening so much. And I say evening, the fact that right now it is 6.38 p.m. and it is still so bright outside it makes me so happy. Like, oh my gosh, daylight saving. Like, I'm just, I'm like in such a better mood. And as you can tell, by the way, I've got my my face paint on, aka my pimple cream. You guys know if you watched my last vlog, my skin has been breaking out lately. I think it's due to stress. This is something that, if there's one thing that historically makes me break out, it's stress. I'm not someone who breaks out on my period. I'm not someone who breaks out, I don't know, with like various makeup. Obviously, you guys know with the news, I always wore so much makeup. I never broke out because of it. I broke out a normal amount, obviously, just like as a human, but wearing a lot of makeup never made me break out. Stress though, it's always been like my kryptonite. And I have to say like, I'm, I'm not happy I'm breaking out obviously, but I definitely have a newfound understanding for people who do deal with skin issues. And I know this isn't even that bad. Like, come on, like this is nothing. But I've always had the mindset of like, oh, like breaking out, like it's not that big of a deal. And it was coming from a place of like trying to make people feel better, of course. Like, you know, when people are like, oh, I'm so upset about my skin. I'm always just like, oh, I don't even notice that. Like, it's not a big deal. But when it's your face, it's not even like, like I can go out right now without makeup and I don't, I'm not even thinking twice. I also have talked about on here, the placement of your pimples makes a difference. If I get any breakouts near my mouth, I, I'm not gonna lie, that makes me self-conscious. I'm okay with, with the placement of these pimples. Like cheeks, I'm fine, chin, forehead's fine, but it's more like the OCD nature of, I must remove this from my face. Like I just, I, it just, I'm just wanting to fix it, you know what I mean? So I've just been so obsessively putting pimple cream on and trying to fix things up. Obviously also like trying to relieve my stress, which church said I helped so much. And honestly, I was sitting down to start editing this vlog before and I noticed that there's like a little file on my computer. It's about like, I don't know, a seven or eight minute chunk of a vlog that I did not upload last week or the week before where Zach and I filmed it in the car and I, I just, as I was editing that vlog, I was like, no, I don't, I, I don't want to put this in the vlog. I always avoid this topic. And I just got on with my day, uploaded the video, whatever. But I think I might put it in this vlog. Take it or leave it. It's just one of those things. I, I think I even talk about it in this clip. Like, I just don't talk about it a lot because it, a lot of people have a lot of judgments. And I don't know. I'm just, you know what? I'm inserting it here. Here you go. Take it or leave it. Like it or don't. Here you go. Guys, I don't even know what to say because I feel like I talk about a lot on here, but there is really just one topic, uh, two topics, two topics that I avoid, politics and religion. And the big reason, I mean, politics is obvious, like it's just, it's such a heated conversation. Obviously people have all different opinions. With religion, it's also a very like controversial slash touchy subject where I feel like people have very strong opinions either way and it's just like it's something I've always avoided because of that reason but then also candidly I think it's because I have mixed feelings about religion and God and all of that like I just I do like I have very mixed feelings and I have not gone to church regularly since I was in ninth grade or no I guess sophomore year sophomore year of high school is kind of when I stopped to be honest and Zach actually has very similar <laughs> bringing him into the convo Zach is very similar like beliefs and views as me. I was actually telling your mom the other night when we had our first date, when I saw you, I was like, oh my gosh, like I love him. Like you just, I just thought you were so cute. But then. <laughs> I have that effect. Yeah. <laughs> but then, because also the pictures your mom sent me like weren't even like the best. So like, I just, it just, it just was so much better than I thought. <laughs> you got lipstick on your teeth. Ah, but then the other, like seriously, the moment of the date where I'm like, I'm pretty sure like I'm gonna marry this person. Remember when we were in that bar slash restaurant, Highmark, and we were, do you remember this? We were talking about religion? Yeah, I mean, we and talked about it a lot, but I remember being at Highmark and talking about everything, yeah. 
Do, do you remember the religion specifically? I mean, I remember we were like on the same page. We came from like the same religious background. I feel like we both had super, especially our grandpas. Like there's no one I know in my life who was more religious than my grandpa. Same with you. I mean, your grandpa was a pastor, obviously. <laughs> um, so yeah, so anyway, we had like the same views and in which I feel like our views were just complicated and like, we don't have to get into it, but I just think it, I was like, oh my gosh, like- No, I've, I mean, what you're saying, uh, yeah, I mean, roundaboutly, I mean, you've kind of described it. We grew up and with religious families. I think we both have parts of us that like believe in different things and there's parts of us that about religion we don't necessarily like and may have been the reason why we don't necessarily still fully, again, engage every week we haven't over our relationship but since we've been back in Dayton we have a lot more and I think just even how we've been engaging recently going to church on Sundays again and and whatnot I think we've both enjoyed in similar ways so I definitely think it's something that is a good part of our relationship because I guess if one of us was one way and one was a complete opposite that could probably cause a major divide. Meeting someone I would need us to have the same like that's just what I, that was like the missing piece from I feel like so many dates I went on it was just such opposite like I went on a date with like a total atheist and then I went on a date with like a total like I just I don't know I feel like we had like a really good fit and I think my views on religion also have been confused by the fact that and I feel like I know you're gonna tell me to cut this out I'm not Zach Zach there are so many things Zach told me to cut out because it does feel controversial but the Catholic Church I have been honestly very upset with you know like what has gone on with them covering up priests molesting children like i mean like, and like that that has upset like that has upset me in ways that i can't even describe it's just first of all you're harming young children's lives and that's something that sticks with you for your entire life but then not only that the hypocrisy to cover it up like i don't know anyway sorry i mean that's all i'm going to say is that i think that really like upset me and turned me away from the church and then we started going to southbrooks like you know sporadically for easter whenever we visited zach's parents years ago i'll be honest like i went because it's just like you know what we do with zach's parents it never like spoke to me in the way that it has over the last i guess what like two months month and a half like where i went great service let's move on with our day i like literally like teared up like 10 different times during that that surface i've just been loving it so much like like i'm literally like tearing up right now um but anyway i i just want to discuss this because i feel like i never talk about this in my vlogs and you don't like there's no point in judging people for what they believe i know in one of my last vlogs they referred to like oh the universe has our back and like people were like why are you like giving credit to the universe it's god like this is not a time to judge people like i'm st i'm growing in my journey and that's why I don't like bringing up things like this because people like nitpick like, but you have to believe this, like not that, like, it's not a linear route and we all have our own paths. For example, I sat through Southbrook churches three years ago and didn't think much and then all of a sudden like, it's all like hitting me. I don't know, I've just been, I've just been so happy. Yeah, no, and I think we, we both have really enjoyed it and we've said this too. I mean, I think a lot of church at times can be the person preaching and I mean Southbrook his name's Charlie McMahon I mean he's someone that we both I think really like how he speaks because it's honest it's very personable it's not just reading from the Bible I think both of us there's there's parts of religion that and, and even the people that participate in religion sometimes drive you away I mean you could the people on the streets there are I'm not saying this in a rude way Bible thumping like saying you can't even say me or I and you're vocabulary everything's about Jesus and every it's, it's just like well what do you mean I can't say it's just crazy and I don't know I, I think Clancy and I both sometimes it's hard like the stories in the Old Testament seem a little bit fictional um that's not being rude it's just some parts of that are, are hard to wrap your mind around where I think Southbrook helps us because they talk about day-to-day -day stuff like today I was talking about money and how much money you have and how you can give back and how Americans are more addicted to dopamine and getting new things and that's very relevant to me. I've always been someone that's money conscious. I, I mean, I was a kid, be, very money conscious, always asking my parents how much money they made, what did this cost, whatever else. I mean, I was always interested in money. It's just the truth and it wasn't, I was a kid, so it's not like you're addicted in a bad way as a child, you're just curious. But how I think the United States has 
basically molded people's minds of getting ni newer, nicer things and showing off and that essential high is what he was saying. It's like a drug is 100% relevant to me. I think it's a, a relevant to Clancy. I think it's relevant to every person that was sitting in church today. I think that's part of it that, that really helps us. And I hope by me saying that, that that's how I like to digest things and parts of religion are, are things that we don't necessarily like. It's not something I hope people are mean about and or taking offensive. That's just where we are at with in our journey. How, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think sometimes that's weird even saying where we're at with our journey. It's just where we're at as humans. It's just like, okay, like that's where the, it's the nature versus nurture, different things that we've had happen in our lives have made us think differently than maybe someone else that is way more religious than we are and believes every word in the Bible is true. So that's, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't judge you if you believe that and that's fine. You're probably in a better place than I am mental, mentally half the time if that's what you believe. I don't know. I mean, it's it's definitely something we've talked about if we move back to Cincinnati or wanting to find a church and wanting to be more involved that way I think would be very beneficial to us. If we don't find one as good as Charlie, I literally would drive here every Sunday. I'm not kidding. Yeah, and I mean, there's other ways you, we could like just listen. You can they, they stream everything, so you don't get the aspect of being around other people um, if you do that, or if we drove up every now and then. If you're like gonna ne comment something negative about what we've said, that's the problem of religion. Like that, and is that's what, why I have yeah, been turned yeah, off. Yeah, and that's so. If you're sitting here fuming about anything we've said, you're the problem. You're the problem, yeah. it's you. Yeah, I mean, but that, no. it's, it's just true. It's like, I mean, it's like, that's just where we're at. So it's just honest. It's being more vulnerable than what we typically are probably on the channel. And we're positive. I mean, we're, we're sitting in the church parking lot right now, again, feeling good about what we've heard and, and what we can try to take away from it. So it's, no, it's a good thing. Yeah, no, and I just feel like I don't ever want to come. I'm not preaching. Like, I don't want to ever come across like that. I just really have felt compelled to, like, talk about this on here. And I don't know. Anyway, that's that's really it. I just, I have felt very, like, impacted by this. And I'm grateful that I discovered this. I've just been really happy. Really happy. When you think about, like, what was it? Two weeks, like, seriously, was it, like, two weeks ago? We just, we realized we didn't get the house. And yeah. it was, like the lowest and then I listened to the message the next day and it was literally all about not getting what you want and because there's a greater purpose anyway uh, that's all I have to say so yeah I don't it's just it's a delicate subject but I vlog my life I vlog my feelings I vlog my just everything like all phases of my life and it feels weird to not put this out there and some of it might resonate with you guys right some of what I vlog when I'm going through hard times or or good times, like you might really resonate with it. Other times you might not, and that's okay. And so I just, I do think that this could have an impact on someone, even just one person. So why not put it out there? So I don't know. Anyway, it's just gonna be a relaxing Sunday evening. Zach's parents are actually at a play tonight, which is really nice. And okay, ready guys? This is, this is how you start off a week, at least if your name is Clancy Burke and you love potatoes. Are you ready for it? Boom! I've got my potatoes for the week. I knew that my camera would fog up. Already cooking, and it's so nice to pre-make my potatoes just because it cuts down on like having to think about it throughout the week. Like, oh, I gotta put a potato in the oven. No, just pop, I mean, I pop it back in the oven, just like preheat it, but yeah, I'm gonna have a nice relaxing Sunday evening. I love you guys so much, seriously. Your comments and your messages, like I've just been getting so many wonderful ones lately, and it really, really, really means the world. So thank you so much. Like it really, really means a lot. And I shall see you here next time. Bye.